The Seventh-day Adventist Church began as a church planting movement. In the late 1800s, church planters, including husband and wife teams such as Albert and Ellen Lane, began opening up new work in the eastern states of America. Between 1896 and 1905, Mrs. Lulu Whiteman alone planted at least 12 churches in New York State. It was hard going. 100 years ago, in 1922, the Adventist Church planted 75 new churches. Last year, it planted nearly two and a half thousand. In 1922, it took nearly five days before a new church was planted. Last year, it took 3.6 hours. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church continues to grow only as it keeps its focus on starting new groups of believers. Church planting is the most effective way to grow and expand the church. Leading the way are faithful global mission pioneers, pioneering the gospel, starting new groups of believers in new areas. Where possible, they work among their own people. They know the language, they know the culture, and they put Christ's method of ministry into practice. Receiving only a small living stipend, they work sacrificially to spread the good news. Supporting the work of pioneers and other church planters are the Global Mission Centers, which help us more effectively reach out to people of other religions, vast people groups largely untouched by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, the ministry of these Global Mission Centers goes largely unpublicized, but they go quietly about their work, finding methods and models to make the Adventist message understandable, attractive and meaningful to people from radically different worldviews. Please pray for Global Mission pioneers and other church planters and our Global Mission Center directors. Pray for these dedicated workers on the most challenging edge of mission, sharing the Adventist message with every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The annual sacrifice offering helps global mission start new groups of believers among unreached people, often in the most challenging places in the world. You can give to the annual sacrifice offering online or in church. Simply mark your tithe envelope, annual sacrifice offering. Do you remember hearing stories about Adventists who hid under tables with layers of blankets so they could type Bible lessons? or about those who braved icy waters to be baptized in secret. A lot has changed in the world over the years. But one thing hasn't changed. There are still areas of the world where it's difficult and even dangerous to become a Christian, and where it's difficult and dangerous to share the gospel. We've gotten used to how fast information travels around the world. Post something online, and you can have immediate responses from halfway around the world. It wasn't always that way. In the late 1800s, it could take more than a month for a letter to travel from the United States to China. It took that long for a ship to make the journey. Today, we can send a message that will be received in seconds. That's great, isn't it? Or is it? When it comes to mission, instant communication can be a blessing giving us new ways to reach out and share the gospel. But it can be a problem, particularly in areas where sharing the gospel is illegal or unwelcome. Stories posted online can be seen by anyone, including those opposed to the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. These people can quickly stir up trouble, inform authorities, and shut down our work. We thank God for the wonderful stories of His leading in these regions of the world. And we all love to hear these stories. Yet we have a responsibility not to cause undue problems for Adventist workers and believers on the ground. A simple story made public has the power to put people's lives in danger and stall mission work. That's why we're putting a veil over these stories. When you see a mission story or video labeled veiled country or veiled city, it's because it comes from a place where details are sensitive this veil will hide the real country or city or real names of people. But we will share as much of the story as possible while protecting people's lives and the church's mission. 
According to a Pew Research Center study, in 2019, government restrictions on religion reached their highest point since 2007. These restrictions include new laws impacting religious workers and activities, religious communication, and even funds supporting Christian mission work. So for now, veiled mission stories will let us see part, but not all of the picture. We will see that God is still working in people's lives despite opposition, oppression, and even persecution. Of course, we never know which stories and pictures will be posted on the internet. But we are intentional about how much we share. Our stories shouldn't keep people from hearing the gospel. We don't want to be the reason someone is hurt or even killed. We have faith that God will protect his people, but we have our own responsibility too. So when you see veiled country or veiled city, please understand the reason and say a special prayer for the people who are working on the front lines in these challenging mission areas, where a stray message or an overheard conversation can lead to beatings, arrest, or even death. Someday the veil will be lifted. Someday we will meet the people behind the veil, and perhaps we will be able to say, I heard your story. I couldn't see you and I didn't know your name, but I prayed for you. Thank you for your support of mission around the world, especially in veiled countries. <laughs>